So the workshop that I'm doing is um, a workshop to help people cultivate their own cut flowers. Um, so something that I've been doing during this restoration project is kind of playing around with um, the, the option of doing cut flowers on this property as it develops. And so I'm learning a lot along the way. Um, it's, it's fun. Uh, I think you can do it in using methods that will not use a lot of water. I think that that's potentially a myth. Um, I think um, we can we can utilize certain um, certain varieties and even incorporate some of our um, water saving native plants into our cut flower gardens and that's kind of what I'm coming to talk about. <laughs> you know, things that we're learning about growing things in South Texas because we have a very unique um, situation here in terms of our rainfall patterns, in terms of our soil and our soil structure or lack thereof. And so we, we really do have to have sort of a regional bank of knowledge that we create for ourselves and for each other so that we can have some success and not think that we all have to have rocks and cactus in our yards and that we can actually have things that are productive and fun and don't necessarily have to waste water. So especially this area right here was an area of very, very dense bamboo. Um, we've since thrown out a whole bunch of native wildflower seed. I also did a layer, you can see the rocket larks were kind of poking up above the, the tick seed that I'm trying to, trying really hard to manage. There are also a whole bunch of native grasses within this little area. And then beyond that, I've started kind of cultivating um, some of the soil back here and trying to start some new rows of um, cut flowers back here. <sighs> so I did a row I, I did a row of um, blackberry. I think our, our neighbors are getting used to us and I think they know that we mean really well and that we're trying pretty hard. <laughs> um, and I think we're trying to convince them too that we are, we're never gonna have this look like a golf course. Um, so in its most natural state, it's going to, to have um, layers. So there'll be some of these native pecans, they'll be, we'll leave some of the hackberries. I know a lot of people hate the hackberries, but the hackberries are very important to wildlife. Little seed on them and birds love the seed and they eat the hackberries. There's also a hackberry butterfly and it's a larval plant for the hackberry butterfly. So we definitely want to make sure that we're leaving adequate amount of um, hackberry on the property. Um, our next big focus is the china berry. Um, we're trying to leave some of the more native things. This is actually one of our native maples. This is oh, cool. um, Acer Nagundo. It's not super beautiful, but it is um, indigenous to the area. So we're definitely gonna keep um, some of that. At the heart of it, um, what I realized after being in, a, you know, in this horticulture career for, for so long, that the thing that I like the most about every aspect of anything that I've done horticulturally is what it does for people. So I see people, their, their whole demeanor change, whether it's around a landscape project, a community garden, um, seeing a freshly arranged bouquet of flowers. I just see this, um, this lightening of their, you know, t of tension. Um, I see some, a, like a spark of joy. You put a garden <laughs> into somebody's yard and that garden is attracting birds and is attracting butterflies or they're able to harvest something from it, um, then it puts them back into, it's not something, it's, they don't have to go, go someplace to get in the car and drive to nature, it's already there for them. And you know, we have that capability and as we grow as a city, if we really are gonna introduce a million more people into San Antonio, 
then we need to kind of train everybody to be thinking about um, what their responsibility is on their little patch of property.